In this video, we continue with the Computer Science 9618 A-Level Curriculum, taking a look at another algorithm you're going to need to know, and that next algorithm are known as stacks. So let's dive in and see what we need to know. Now, stacks work on the first in, last out principle, and they're also known as the last in, first out principle. The first item in the stack is the last item to leave the stack. The most recent item added is on top of the stack and is the first item to be removed. And when we talk about adding an item, we're talking about pushing. When an item is pushed to the stack, it's added. When it's removed, we have a special term known as popped. When an item is popped from the stack, it is removed. Now, when you pop an item, the item at the top of the stack is removed. You cannot pop any item you want when using the stack without first popping the items on top of it. And that brings us to our top pointer. It points to the top of the stack to keep track of the next item to get popped. If it is zero, then the stack is empty. Now, if you're including index zero in your one-dimensional array representing the stack, then the value would be negative one. And this zero or negative one, depending on what your starting index is, that would represent a null pointer. And we also have what is known as a base pointer. It points to the bottom of the stack. Now, compared to the t we compare it to the top pointer to see if there are any items to pop. So let's take a look at a quick sample of how stacks work and then we'll be programming one. So here we have our stack that contains five open spaces. We are emitting index zero. So zero in this case would be my null pointer when my top pointer equals zero would be null. Now if we were to push the items 11, 22, and 33, it would look like this. So first we would push 11 and 11 goes into the bottom of the stack. I can remove 11 because there are no other items. If I wanted to pop 11, I could. Next, we're gonna push 22. I can no longer pop 11 first because 22 is the last item in the stack, so it's the first one that's going to be out of the stack. But then I push 33. Now 33 is the last one in, so it's gonna be the first one out. So now that we've pushed them, let's go ahead and pop these one at a time. So we're gonna pop 33, and we, it's the first, it was the last one in, so it's the first one out. Now we can pop 22, index two. We pop that. Now 11 was the first one in, and we said it works on the first in, last out principle. Because 11 was the first one in, it is now the last out when we pop it. That is how stacks work. It's one of the e easiest abstract data types uh, to work with. So my top pointer now, uh, we popped our last item in the stack. My top pointer would be equal to zero, representing that it is a null pointer. There is nothing for it to point to because one, two, three, four, five, those spaces are empty. So now that we know how stacks work, let's program a stack. Okay, I went ahead and set up some global variables. So we're gonna have our stack called stack. It's gonna have five spaces. This is gonna be very similar to what we just did in the PowerPoint. We're gonna have our base pointer, which points to the bottom of the stack. Our top pointer, so we know the next item to get popped. Stack full, so we know when the stack is full, meaning that there is no more room in the stack, and then the item which we are going to add. Inside of our sub main, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make choice and that's gonna represent our menu, which we'll uh, talk about in just one second. Our base pointer is gonna be one that's pointing to the bottom of the stack. Our top pointer, we're gonna go ahead and set to a null value because there's nothing in the stack at all. And then our stack full will be five. Once we have five items, the stack is full. Now we're gonna make a menu. We're gonna ask, does the user wanna push? Do they wanna pop? Do they wanna view the stack or exit? Let's fast forward and see that now. So we're gonna use a simple post conditional loop. We're gonna clear the console each time it comes back to the main menu, keep it looking nice and clean. And we give them the option, which of the following would you like to perform? Do they wanna push, which is adding an item to the stack, pop, removing the item from the stack. We need to be able to view the stack to make sure it's stacking correctly. And then of course we wanna exit. We're gonna give them, we're gonna record the choice uh, that they make. And then we have a simple uh, case statement, uh, select case choice one, which is push, two is pop, Three is our view stack sub, and this is gonna loop until they select exit. So if you wanna go ahead and get that menu, feel free to pause and do so. 
And moving along, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at pushing uh, to the stack. Now, when we push, we want to push an item. So we need to ask them, what number are you pushing? And the reason it's a number is because we did, our stack is made of integers. Uh, so we simply record that. Now, if our top pointer is less than stack full, meaning there is room, we have to have room in our stack, then we're simply going to increment the top pointer, move it from the bottom of the stack to the next item, which is one. And then our item, we're putting right inside the first available item. And because we incremented the top pointer and it started at zero, it's now no longer null, it is now one, and we increment the top pointer. If uh, it's not less than stack full, meaning there's no room, we simply say stack is full, unable to push additional item. We throw in a console.read line so the program pauses, and then it loops back to the main menu, clearing the console. Let's take a look at how the pop one works uh, next, but if you need to pause here to get your push code, feel free to do so. Take a look at our pop code here, removing an item, if the top pointer equals base pointer minus one, then there's nothing to pop, because our top pointer would be equal to a null value. Uh, base pointer is one, pointing to the base, one minus one is zero, so if top pointer equals zero, I guess we could have just done if top pointer equals zero, which is our null value, we could indicate there's nothing to pop now that I think about it, but that's okay. Uh, if it's not, uh, if there is something there to pop, then we want to store that in item. We take our stack top pointer, we store that into the item, and then we say data item, and then we identify the item has been popped, and then we decrement our top pointer down by one, meaning that uh, we are no longer pointing to that item that was that top of the stack. So let's pause here, allow you to get this. And our last procedure, view stack, will allow us to view the stack. Now, I created a local uh, temporary variable called current pointer, and I'm going to load top pointer into that. I can't update my top pointer variable because I'm not always going to know what it is, and I can't manipulate that because it is a global variable which will affect the rest of the program. But all we do is simply run a uh, do while loop, and as long as the current pointer is it uh, equal to base pointer minus one, meaning our null pointer, then we're going to output the stack in that order, and we're just going to decrement starting from the top of the stack and moving to the bottom. The last thing we need to do is run our program. Now, when we run our program, there's a couple things we need to check. The first one is to try to pop an item from the stack. When we pop an item from the stack and the stack is empty, it should tell us that there is nothing to pop. And it does. That's working beautiful. If I try to view the stack, it should show me nothing because there's nothing in the stack and it does beautiful. Now we're gonna push an item. We're gonna push the same numbers we pushed in the PowerPoint. So the first one's gonna be 11. The next one I'm gonna push is gonna be 22. Now I'm gonna go ahead and view the stack now. When I view the stack, I see 11's on the bottom, 22 is on the top. Now when I push the next item, 33, and now when I view the stack, it should show me 33, 22, and 11, and it does working beautiful. Now, if I pop the items, it should pop the items one at, a, one at a time according to our code. So I'm gonna pop an item, data item 33 has been popped. Well, let's check and see if that's true. We go to view the stack, we see 33 is no longer there, it's 22 and 11. If I pop another item, data item 22 has been popped, working beautiful. If I view my stack, we can see 22 has been removed. There's only one item left, and that is 11. Data item 11 has been popped. So this is how uh, a stack works. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next video.